Hi. Now, suppose I had a matrix A, which was a two by two matrix, and it's got some numbers in here, and I've just generalized this to A, B, C, D. Now, suppose there was a matrix I such that A times I was exactly the same as I times A, and the result was just simply A. What would that matrix I be? Well, with experimentation, it turns out to be this matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. The identity matrix, that's what it's called. And I'll show you. Look, it always works out. If we take this general matrix A, let's just say then that we have A, B, C, D, and we multiply it then by the identity matrix I, so 1, 0, 0, 1. Then in the usual way, when we do rows times columns, we'll have the top row times the first column. It'll be A times 1, which is A, plus B times 0, which is 0. A plus 0 is A. And then if we do top row N column, it'll be A times 0, plus B times 1. And that comes to B. And then we'll do bottom row times first column, C times 1, plus D times 0. So that's just going to give us C. And finally, bottom row times the end column. C times 0 is 0, plus D times 1, which is D. So you can see we get back the matrix A. And it works the other way around, as I said. 1, 0, 0, 1, the identity matrix, multiplied by the matrix A, A, B, C, D. Well, I'll leave it for you to try this, okay? Rows by columns in the usual way, and you should find again that you get A, B, C, D. So we therefore have this result then that any matrix, any 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by the matrix I, 1, 0, 0, 1, the identity matrix, gives you exactly the same result if you turned it around the other way. And you get the matrix A, the original matrix back. So we call this the identity matrix. We'll just write that down here. And this is a very important matrix. Identity matrix I which equals 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, we want to extend this idea, so we'll just come down here. Suppose there's a matrix now. Let's take the matrix A, but suppose there's a matrix which we call the inverse matrix, and the inverse matrix, we use this notation, A with a little minus 1 here. Suppose this inverse matrix was such that it didn't matter which way around you multiplied it with the matrix A, that what you got back was the identity matrix I. What would this inverse matrix be? How would we work it out? Well, first of all, it can be shown that we work this out by working out something called the determinant. Just write that in for you, the determinant. The determinant of the matrix A, often written for short as just simply debt and then A. And to work out the determinant of A, what we do is we take this diagonal here, often called the leading diagonal, and we do A times D. So we do AD, and then we subtract the product of the trailing diagonal, this one here. In other words, C times B or B times C. So that is the determinant of a matrix A. Let's just box that up for you so that uh, just to get you to try and learn that. Now, once we've worked out the determinant A, it can be shown that the inverse matrix, as I say, written as a with a minus 1 there, is equal to 1 divided by the determinant of A, let's just write it as debt A, multiplied by, now, 
What we do is we take whatever numbers that we've got here on the leading diagonal and we swap them around. We just put the D here and the A there. So we put D there and A there. So swap those two numbers around. And then with the numbers that you've got here on the trailing diagonal C and D, B, what we do is we change the sign of them. So the B becomes minus B and the C becomes minus C. So if I had a 3 here, I'd write minus 3. If I had minus 4 here, I'd write minus minus 4, which is obviously just simply 4. You just switch the sign, in other words. And this works. This is how we go about finding the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, it's not always going to be that we can find out the inverse of a matrix because it really does depend on what the determinant is. If this determinant, this value here, turns out to be 0, then 1 divided by 0 is undefined it would give us a result that doesn't exist. So it's worth noting that if that determinant, we'll just put if debt A, if that determinant of A equals 0, then A to the minus 1, the inverse matrix, okay, does not exist. Let's just put does not exist. And if this happens, there's a special name for the matrix A. It's called singular. I'll just put that in brackets. It's called a singular matrix. So A to the minus 1, the inverse of A, will not exist. We can only work out the inverse of a matrix if that determinant does not equal 0. In other words, it's what we call a non-singular matrix. Now, I'll just demonstrate this idea, show you that it does work and uh, how to go about it. So if we were to say that the matrix A was, say, or what can we have? Minus 1, say 3, minus 4, and 2. Now, the next thing that we want to do is work out what the determinant is. So we'll just put then the determinant of the matrix A is going to equal the product of this diagonal, the leading diagonal, so that'd be minus 1 times 2, which is minus 2, and then we subtract the product of the trailing diagonal, and that'd be minus 4 times 3, which is minus 12. So we've got minus 2 minus minus 12, and that comes to 10. So that determinant of the matrix A doesn't equal 0, so it's a non-singular matrix, and so therefore the inverse matrix will exist. So to get that inverse matrix, we just use this result here. So we've got, therefore, the inverse matrix, A with a minus 1 there, is going to equal 1 divided by the determinant, which is 10. So we've got 1 tenth, and then all we do next is we switch these two elements around. Okay, so we'll put the 2 there and the minus 1 down here. And then change the sign of these two, but keep those elements in the same place. So we're going to have minus 3, and in place of minus 4, it's going to be 4. Okay, so switch the signs on those two elements there. And we could write this, we could leave it like this if you wanted to. Some people do. Others will just multiply each of these elements in the matrix by, in this case, one tenth. And that's going to give us the matrix two tenths, or 0 0.2, and then minus three tenths, and then four tenths, and minus one tenth. So we've got our inverse matrix. Now it's worthwhile checking to see that this works, okay? You could do A multiplied by the inverse matrix. In other words, A being, in this case, minus 1, 3, minus 4, 2. And multiplying it by the inverse matrix. I'm going to go for this one here, this version here. 2 tenths, 3 minus 3 tenths, 4 tenths, and then minus 1 tenth. 
You could even pause the video, try it yourself, see what you get. Anyway, let's just uh, go ahead with it. We've got row times column, minus one times two tenths, plus three times four tenths. So minus one times two tenths is minus two tenths, plus 12 tenths, okay? And that gives us 10 tenths, which is indeed one. Then if we do row times the end column, minus one times minus three tenths, plus three times minus one tenth. So that gives us three tenths, minus three tenths, zero. And you'll find that when you do minus four two times two tenths, four tenths, you're gonna get minus eight tenths, plus eight tenths, again, zero. And finally, the bottom row with the end column, that will give us 12 tenths, then we've got minus two tenths, a total of 10 tenths or one. So you can see it does work. And if you did it the other way around, okay, a to the minus one, a, the inverse of a multiplied by a. This time I'm just going to use the matrix one tenth multiplied by two minus three, four minus one, just to show you how you can do it with this form rather than the two tenths minus three tenths, four tenths minus one tenth matrix. And if we multiply this by the matrix A, okay, we've just got minus one, three, minus four, two. What does this give us? Well, I'd want to keep the one tenth back for a moment and then just multiply these two matrices together. And if I do that, you'll find that you should get 10, zero, 0, 10, so that when you find one-tenth of this matrix, you end up with that identity matrix again, one naught, naught one. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea then how you find the inverse of a matrix. And why is this important? Well, it's got many applications. In later tutorials, I'll show you how we can use this idea to solve simultaneous equations, for instance. We also use it in transformations of shapes. And these are, as I say, in future tutorials. So a very important matrix to work with. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial. And as usual, remember you'll find all my videos, the playlists, indexes, etc. on my website. So uh, that's the best place to view everything. It's all totally free.